Let's go to Genesis chapter one. And I think that this is really important. In Genesis chapter one, verse 27, it says, so God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. So we're gonna come back to that. But I think it's really important that we understand that we, it was, it, God was, God was the, the blueprint, if you will. And we are a direct reflection of who God is, his goodness, his glory. Mm -hmm. And so we are made in that image. And I, I, I think that's lost on us sometimes yeah. because we hold our image up to expectations of the world. Am I skinny enough? Am I cute enough? Am I stylish enough? Am I with it enough? Am I smart enough? Am I educated enough? You know, we hold the, the, the definition of ourselves up to this impossible standard of the world when in reality, we are enough mm -hmm. because of who God is, right. not because of some form, fashion, or function of, of our own self. So keep that in mind. But then let's go down to Genesis chapter two. And uh, I think this is a verse that has intrigued me and at times haunted me. So let me just read it to you. Um, let's go to halfway through verse 20. But for Adam, and this is Genesis chapter two, halfway through verse 20. But for Adam, no suitable helper was found. Verse 21, so the Lord caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and closed up that place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man and brought her to the man. Okay, so you know sometimes when I'm studying scripture, and I, I come across certain words, I tend to pay attention to the individual words. So I'm constantly asking Joel, okay, let's take this back to the original language. Let's make sure that we really understand the fullness of this word and that something's not getting lost in translation. So of course, if we're in the Old Testament, we're going back to Hebrew. Yep. And I try not to do this all the time, but when I'm studying, I really love to do this because I don't only want to read the Bible, but I want the Bible to read me. So when the I Bible is reading me, yeah. then I just try to soak in the word as it is. But when I'm reading the word, I love to dig in. So my question became this, if, if God said that it's not good for the man to be alone, which is an amazing verse, actually, if you think about it, <laughs> it's not good for the man to be alone, right? So he created a helper suitable. Yep. So it seems like this is a very important situation. So my question is, what am I supposed to help with? Mm -hmm. As a woman, what am I supposed to help with? Yeah. And what would make me fit or suitable? And what would make me not suitable? Because this is really important. Yeah. So Joel and I did some digging in this and it appears, and, and I'll let you say the word, Joel, because yeah. I want you to get the Hebrew word in, but it appears that this Hebrew word, suitable or fit, mm -hmm. um, in, the ESV. in the ESV is is very, I know, thank you, you, Joel. You just had to get that in, didn't you? Some people won't be looking at ESV, I don't know. Yeah, they might, yeah. okay, <laughs> good for you, Joel. Um, but it has two meanings. Yeah that I think are very significant. So I'm gonna turn it over to you, Joel, and yeah, let's talk so, about these two meetings. Yeah, this is really important. It's interesting because the word actually shows up in verse 18. It's not good for the man, so I'll make a helper fit or suitable for him. And again, in verse 20, so what is this word fit? It's the Hebrew word neged. Um, and, and how do we spell it? So you, the transliteration of the Hebrew word would be uh, N-E-G-E-D. Um, and, and the most literal translation of this suitable fit is true, but it is also one who is opposite or in front of. It's a reflection of or a mirror of. Wow. And this is one of the things about the biblical text. I just want to let you know, we are perpetual students of God's word. There's never a moment that we just arrive recently, like within the last couple of days while we've been back in this verse, I've been doing more Hebrew study and I looked into the into this word a little bit deeper and this word neged, um, there's a, a noun form of the word which is negid with an I instead of an ed, it's an I and that means prince 
or royalty. So in the word, there's this family of words. And one of the um, connotations, one of the, the ways to think about it is also in royalty. So what is happening here? And I'm going to hand it back to Lisa. But it seems like absolutely there is an intentionality of God placing Eve in front of, opposed to him, mirrored to him. And who is Eve but a image bearer, a person made in the likeness and image of God, and who are image bearers, royalty, children of the king. Yes, and so it appears as if Eve is reflecting something back to the man, not something of herself like a mirror, so it's not a perfect reflection of Adam. Adam and Eve are very physically different, but she is reminding Adam of the royalty that they both possess because they are made in the image of God. So let's go back really quickly and look at why would this be important and what does this have to do with shame scripts? Yeah. So if you look at the ingredients that the man is made from, it says very clearly that God chose the dust of the ground. Now God had access to everything and I think it's kind of ironic that God would choose this ingredient, dust. Because, you know, think about it, if you go and dust your house or dust your bookshelf today, and you use, I don't know, like a Swiffer wipe or something, one of those that collects the dust, okay? So you use this. I've never seen someone go, wow, precious dust, amazing. Let me put it in a little acrylic shadow box and let's treasure you forever. No, what do you do with the dusty, rack. You wash it or you throw it away, yeah, right? Get rid of it. Yeah. So dust is seemingly pretty insignificant. Yeah. But man is not just dust. Man is also breath of God, mm. made in the image of God, meant to, if we look back up at Genesis chapter 1, fill the earth. Now right before that it says in Genesis 1:28, God blessed them and said, be fruitful and increase in number. Now that is to populate the earth. But if you look at the fill the earth part, not everyone is going to add to the population of the earth. Some people are parents and some people are not parents. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But everyone is supposed to fill the earth up with what? Evidence of the goodness of God and the glory of God. So when you put all of this together, it seems as, as, as if Eve, her primary help that she's supposed to give is certainly have children. If they're in a marriage and they, they want to have children, that's great. And Eve can do that very uniquely. Um, but she's also supposed to remind Adam that you are not just dust of the ground. You are not dust just meant to be pushed aside or thrown away. You are also breath of God, made in the image of God, hand designed by God to fill this earth up with the evidence of the goodness of God and the glory of God. And so she is to speak this over him. Now, as humans, men will sometimes have moments where they look more like the ingredient dust than they do the ingredient of the breath of God. Yeah. So it's so important. I kind of think about the dust being equal to the shame script. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not good, good enough, enough dust. Yeah. That's good. But... I am good enough, not just good enough, I am enough mm -hmm. because I'm made in the image of God with a holy assignment to fill the earth up with the glory and the goodness of God everywhere I go. And I just think this is so beautiful. And then Adam is supposed to reflect back to the woman, you're not just broken off bone. If you're driving down the road today and there's a carcass laying on the side of the road. Now, some people like to decorate with carcasses. You know, that's an issue they can cover in counseling that's one day. That's another show, too. Yeah, ah, it's another show. <laughs> but for the most part, if you just see a broken off bone, what is a broken off bone supposed to be? Buried. Mm. Right? Yeah. And yet, the woman is not just broken off bone. The woman is also touch of God, design of God, because she is made in the image of God with the holy assignment to fill this earth up everywhere she goes with the evidence of God's goodness and God's glory. Yeah. 
And so this is the divine echo, yes. where the man is reminding the woman, you're not just broken off bone. Yeah. You are touch and design of God. And the woman is saying, and you're not just dust. You are also breath of God. And do you see how this takes us from getting, getting stuck in those shame scripts, I'm nothing but dust, I'm nothing but broken off bone, or the equivalent of whatever your shame script is, and infusing the, the right picture of who we really are in Christ. And this is what I like to call the divine echo. Now, who would hate the divine echo? The very one, the enemy, who was at one time an angel, just Glorious. Glorious angel, right? Yeah, beautiful. Before the fall. And the decision that he made is that he didn't want to just reflect the glory of God or praise yeah. God. He wanted that praise, that worship, that glory for himself. Yeah, to be God. And so God took him out and put him in a position here that he can never have access to that glory. Mm -hmm. And he is the opposite. He does not reflect the goodness of God and the glory of God. The enemy, what does he do? He steals, he kills, he destroys. He is the author of every shame script. Yeah. He is the father of lies, no question. right? Mm -hmm. And so he can't stand the enemy, whether you call him Lucifer, the devil, Satan, the enemy cannot stand us reflecting the goodness of God and the glory of God because it's the very thing he can no longer have access to for himself. Mm -hmm. So what does he do? He makes us want to revert back to you're nothing but dust, you're nothing but broken off bone. And so he introduces a counterfeit echo. He wants to interrupt this divine echo where we're speaking life over one another and we're speaking the true identity about us being made in the image of God. And the enemy comes in and interrupts the divine echo with the counterfeit echo, which is shame. <laughs>